SNP are blaming the cuts that they need to make here in Scotland on you. As you say, it's dire financial situation that you've inherited. Uh, and clearly the SNP are now blaming you on the cuts that they need to make here in Scotland. What do you say to that? Well, the SNP government is as guilty as the Conservative government of uh, spending more than they were bringing in. And now the Scottish government are having to make difficult decisions. Uh, Anna Sawa and the Labour opposition in Scotland were warning the SNP uh, about the unsustainable uh, situation they were in. The SNP refused to listen. They made decisions uh, that were not sustainable. And now it is Scottish people who are paying the price for the decisions of the Scottish government. Um, Chancellor, it was a colossal mistake, was it not, to cut the winter fuel payment when we now know that bills are going to rise by 10% in October. Huge mistake. When I became Chancellor of the Exchequer, I inherited a £22 billion black hole in the public finances. Taking no action wasn't an option because that would have made it difficult for the government to finance its uh, uh, its, its needs and we would have ended up in the same position that the previous Conservative government uh, ended up in, uh, with mortgage rates and interest rates spiking and pensions being put in peril. So we had to take difficult decisions in very challenging circumstances because the previous government was overspending by £22 billion just this year alone and we had to take action to get a grip of the public finances. This is your decision on your watch at a time when bills are going up by 10%. You should have handled this better, shouldn't you? The truth is that these are not decisions that I wanted to make, but these are decisions we had to make, given the inheritance that we face from the Conservative government. And there'll be more difficult decisions to come in the budget later this year. It's a stark reality after the mess that the previous Conservative government had left this Labour government to inherit. It means difficult decisions, but without difficult decisions, we're going to face serious problems with our public finances. I will not take the risks that the Conservatives have taken previously that would put our uh, uh, economy in danger and would make it difficult to finance government spending. On the, the last question on this particular uh, theme, the uh, Committee on Fuel Poverty says that there are people above your threshold that you're now talking about for these payments who are going to need help. What are you going to do about this? And why can't you just say this was a mistake. We were left a £22 billion black hole for this year in the public finances. Those are numbers and that was spending covered up by the previous Conservative government, who during the election campaign made more unfunded commitments. We cannot carry on like this. And so it's not a decision I wanted to make, but it was a decision that I had to make in incredibly challenging circumstances to put our public finances on a firm, fitting, firm footing. I would never take risks in the way that Conservatives did with our economic stability and our financial stability because when you take risks with the country's uh, financial stability, you go the same way that the previous Conservative government did, putting huge pressure on family finances with interest rates and mortgage rates spiking and putting pensions in peril. I won't take those risks. That required difficult decisions. There are more difficult decisions to come in the budget later this year because of the mess that the previous Conservative government have left this Labour government to pick up the pieces of. So let's go on to the theme of what you've just been discussing about the more difficult decisions that are coming down the track. The problem is here that the UK's economy was uh, the fastest growing in the G7 earlier this year. You are pretending to the public, are you not, that things are worse than they are so that you can raise taxes? The UK economy is just emerging from the recession that we entered into last year and two quarters of uh, positive economic growth is not going to reverse uh, more than a decade of economic stagnation. Much work is needed to rebuild the foundations of our economy so we can rebuild Britain and make working people better off. And that is why growing our economy is absolutely essential. And that's why I'm here today at the uh, uh, Technology and Manufacturing Research Centre here in uh, Glasgow, looking at the big opportunities to grow our economy in areas of advanced manufacturing, in uh, shipbuilding, in green uh, technologies and industries in the future, in space and satellites. There is huge opportunity to grow the UK economy, including here in Scotland. And that's why growth is the number one mission of this new government. Because unless we grow the economy, we're going to continue to be in a situation 
when taxes are at too high a level and public spending is uh, uh, not sustainable. We've got to break out of that, this doom loop, which is why growing the economy is the number one priority of this new government. We're very tight on questions here. Um, so let me just ask you very directly, can you rule out raising inheritance tax and raising capital gains in the budget. Can you rule that out, Chancellor? I'm not going to write a, a, a budget two months ahead of delivering it. We're going to have to make difficult decisions in a range of areas. Can you rule spending, it out? On spending, on welfare and tax, we're going to have to make a series of difficult decisions. Uh, but I'll set out that detail in the right and proper way on the 30th of October at that budget. So you can't rule it out? I'll set out the budget on the 30th of October. And just